Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a new year and we have a new graphics card, the RTX 4070 Ti. And it's fair to say that when the reviews went live for this, people were not best pleased. And there's pretty much two ways of looking at it. The way I saw it when I did my build that I filmed before Christmas, not knowing the price of this card, because Nvidia hadn't actually given it to us. They hadn't done their CS press briefing where they told people this was up to three times faster than the 3090, which was such a stupid thing to do. It's just in one time tiny little game and demo. So that video was pretty much all focused on performance and actually getting the best build possible with the 4070 Ti. And if you are going to build with a 4070 Ti, I'm still really proud of that video and of the build because I think that does operate decent value for what you can actually get in 2023. But this video is going to be a proper deep dive on the Gigabyte 4070 Ti Gaming OC. We're going to be having a closer look at the card itself, its performance, the way it looks in the chassis, and of course showing you those all important gameplay benchmarks benchmark numbers, along with thermals, acoustics, and maybe even a little bit of cheeky overclocking. And despite everything you've heard about the 4070 Ti, I promise there is actually some good news in this box. So join me as we discuss everything 4070 Ti after a short word from this video's sponsor. Corsair's K100 Air is here, and it is marvellous. This ultra-thin mechanical keyboard is perfect for those wanting shorter travel, whilst maintaining full gaming prowess. Packing up to 8,000 Hz of polling rate, Cherry MX Ultra Low Profile Switches, and gorgeous RGB lighting, what more could you ask for? Get yours today with the link down below. Okay, right, let's start with the bad news. This was originally the 4080 12 gig, and it has been rebadged, probably at a cost that may have even been passed on to you, because of course, all of the actual branding needs to be changed, including what was on the graphics card. How much of that is true? I can't say, I'm not in the manufacturing of this card, but I think it's safe to assume that those things are probably accurate. Having said that though, the price of the card has actually come down since it was originally launched as the RTX 4080 12 gig, so maybe it's not too bad. Let's swap over to good old overhead so you can actually see this thing in its full glory, and here it is. The Ego is actually a very attractive GPU, and if you go for a lower spec card, so something like a 3060, it's going to be made mainly of plastic. This seems to be a lot more metallic, which is nice. We have this pass-through design here. It is still a fairly big card, but it's definitely not the absolute largest one out there. This is actually the second 4070 Ti that I've seen, and both of them have been the more entry-level variants. And I want to make this very, very clear that these are going to be the cards to go for, because they're both going to be very quiet. They're not going to have any real issues with thermals or acoustics. So there's no point buying any like over-the-top like Strix version, like, I don't know, maybe even a Gaming X, just anything that's priced way above the RRP, in my eyes, just isn't going to be worth it, because for that sort of money, you could get like a 7900 XT or something like that. And can someone please tell me how we've got to the stage where how we've got to the stage where it seems acceptable for graphics card companies, not singling any of them out at all, to sell GPUs for like £200 more than the RRP. It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, I've been talking about this for ages. Do you remember my 3060 Ti Strix review? You can find that in the top right corner of your screen. And people were actually defending it at the time, saying, oh, you can't get hold of any. They're all really expensive. That card was about £200 more than Nvidia's RRP. And I, I don't really know what can be done about this. Is there more policing to be done? Should it be done? Is it acceptable to sell cards to people when they don't necessarily know that the performance isn't going to be any different really at all? It's something that has upset me for quite a long time and as long as you're watching this channel I will always be calling things out like that. But rest assured that if you are looking at a 4070 Ti, something like the Eagle should be as close to the RRP as possible, but obviously then the shops might sell it for more money and it just seems that everyone's out to get you and it just seems like a pretty sad and sorry state of affairs at the moment. But anyway, back to the overview, we do have a BIOS switch between overclock and silent. It is actually a fair bit more plasticky on the rest of the card, it's just the back plate that seems to be made of metal, the rest is plastic, but again this doesn't bother me at all, it looks good, I personally think that's all that matters. And then. In terms of I.O., we have one HDMI and three DisplayPort 1.4s. So you won't be able to use this with DP 2.1, but it's definitely not the sort of card that's going to make any real difference for that at all. Anyway, the only other thing to mention before we put this in our rig is that we do have a GPU support bracket in the box as well. I don't think it's going to be quite so essential with this, but if you want to use it, it's nice to have. This being a 40 series card, we do, of course, also have this horrible adapter. I say horrible, it's not actually quite so bad because it is, of course, a two-way, which is two eights to one 12 or 16, depending on whether you 
you're including the sense pins. It's not ideal. I would go to cable mod probably or somewhere like that and get an adapter, but it's not as bad as the 4080 that has a three-way splitter or the 4090 that has a four. Let's pick up our 4070 Ti and line it up with the slot click it into place and you can see that actually it's not a particularly huge graphics card by more modern standards. It's still going to need a decent case because it is a little bit of a wide boy but it's not anything particularly crazy in terms of length. Get it all plugged in and then of course attach it to our card. Making sure it's pushed all of the way in. Grab our monitor plug us in and give ourselves some power. We will of course also need the PC-centric mouse mat that is now in very limited quantities. It is not around forever, pre-order is over. If you want one, I think you can still buy it down below. And when they're for sale, when they're gone, they're gone, that is it. So if you can buy one, link is down below. Let's start with what should be the best case scenario. Some Cyberpunk 2077 with the pre-release DLSS 3.0, it's not really a beta, is it? Alpha, press branch. I'm not sure when the full version of this will actually release. Maybe it got delayed due to The Witcher or something, but here you can see we've got DLSS and then frame generation. And this is exclusive to the 40 series, which is one of the reasons why this should be a fair bit faster than the previous gen. But we'll leave this all on automatic and we'll scroll down and ensure that ray tracing is on and we'll set it to ultra. This is of course running at 4K, but we'll lower down the resolutions. And I think this is a big thing about this current generation. It's that 4K gaming is no longer this like big exclusive thing for the really ultra rich, right? I mean, a lot of people now own at least a 4K TV and 4K monitors and things are coming down in price and they are becoming a lot more mainstream. So having a graphics card that can actually run at 4K, even if it is using something like DLSS, is actually quite important. And here you can see we're actually getting an absolutely ginormous frame rate. I mean, haven't you Used this demo in a while, I kind of forgot how good it looks. We're getting around about 95 FPS at absolute max settings. I mean, to be fair, there's Psycho, so it's not quite max. Almost max settings at 4K DLSS automatic. It is very, very impressive, and this looks so much better than when I played the game originally a couple of years ago, which was 1440p with balanced DLSS 2.0, and not all of the ray tracing was turned on. That was with a 3080, and I was getting around about 60 to 70 FPS or so with some ray tracing, but not all of it. So this is clearly a lot better from a graphics card that, and this is the problem, right? Costs the same sort of money. Obviously the 3080 RRP, well, I think was slightly lower than this card, but then the real world price was actually a lot higher, which is why we're in this mess in the first place, because it's almost like no one knows how much a graphics card should be worth and everyone is just going with what people are actually willing to spend. And while it is very, very frustrating, the fact of the matter is all the time people buy graphics cards that cost from £800, then that just sends signals to the market to say, hey, this is acceptable pricing. And this is why we're all getting pretty frustrated with it, really, because, okay, maybe this was originally meant to be an 80 series product, but let's be honest, it was always really a 70 series. And we're stuck with $800. But don't worry, we'll be talking about that properly a little bit later in the video. For now, we're just gonna focus on performance. Around about 90 to 100 FPS, Cyberpunk is fantastic. I think you'd be very happy if you had this in your system. Don't forget, this is 4K DLSS. Let's lower down the settings a little bit more. We'll now set it to 1440p, but I will set DLSS to quality. And actually the game doesn't look quite as good as it did at 4K Automatic, which I find pretty interesting. We're definitely rendering less pixels, but as a result, you are going to get a higher frame rate. Now we're getting around about 110 to 120 FPS, and it is an absolutely beautiful game. I mean, that's a bit weird. Let's not look at that. Let's look at this bit of the city. <laughs> In terms of latency, we're getting around about 55, which I think for Cyberpunk is fine. It's going to be a bit okay when you get into the shooty bits, but it's not necessarily a problem. But if you're very anti DLSS 3.0 for whatever reason, we will turn frame generation off so you can see the real performance if you like. And the frame rate now drops to around about 80 frames a second. But the latency hasn't actually changed too much. We've got about five milliseconds better. So for me, I would just leave frame generation on. I think this is a perfect demo for this graphics card. And as I say, if you had this in your rig, I think you'd be very happy. I just filmed a bit about thermals and then I realized that the side panel was off and I don't want to get told off today. 
so let's put that back on. Continuing the next gen portion of this review, we will now move on to some Portal RTX. And again, as a reminder, this is a game that doesn't like being recorded, so I will probably just have to tell you the frame rate. I am recording it, but it'll probably come out as static. But we're getting around about 60 FPS with everything turned on. So this is DLSS, frame gen, and normal DLSS. This is a fully path traced title, so it's a weird one because it's properly next gen in terms of the lighting, but obviously it's a very ancient game in terms of everything else. But we are rendering this at 4K, so again, 60 FPS, it's a nice little... It's a bit more than a tech demo, but it's not really a reason to buy the graphics card. It's just something that can show you the capabilities of it. Or if you just love Portal, we can play it again and again and again. Again. I mean, to be fair, that doesn't sound like the worst idea in the world. But here's the thing, right? We as gamers don't play what AMD or NVIDIA, Intel actually want us to play. We play the titles that we want to play. And for most people, that is going to be something like Apex Legends, some Warzone, Battlefield, pretty much exclusively multiplayer and then come back to the AAAs when one in particular comes out that we really, really want to play. So for me, the multiplayer is almost the most important thing. So let's test that. Let's also play the guessing game. What are we going to get in terms of frame rate? We'll start with 1440p. And here we go. This is the moment of truth as we dash down to the floor. And we're getting, it seems, about 200 FPS. Is it going to be slightly higher when we hit the floor? Maybe. Around about 200 to 250 FPS. But for me, forgetting absolutely everything else, what this used to be called, the fact that it has less VRAM than the old 4080, that it's maybe slightly slower in terms of memory speed than a 3080. Taking all of that stuff out of the equation, there's no denying that I think everyone watching this video would be very, very happy playing 1440p Apex Legends at about 250 FPS. This is not me defending Nvidia or defending anything. It's just observing that if you are in the market for a graphics card and you want one that can be future-proof with ray tracing, but you want one that can play something like Apex Legends every single night for hours and hours on end, this is clearly a very, very capable graphics card. And a lot of people have pointed out that in terms of 3090 Ti performance, it's very similar. You can get them used maybe for the same sort of price. But for me, the 3090 is just not the card I would want for actually gaming, because while it has loads of VRAM, it uses way more power, which is not only going to cost you more money but in my experience every card I tested just made an absolute racket I hated that card I actually had it in my personal system I took it out replaced it with a 3080 because it was driving me insane whereas this is nice and power efficient and it's literally silent this is why I say please don't buy any like more expensive SKU than an entry level 30 40, 70 Ti, because there's just no point. I mean, look at the temperatures, 50 degrees on the GPU. It's just not worth it. So taking everything else away, including the price, this is a very impressive graphics card. And I think for most people, it's all the performance you're really going to need. I mean, let's up the stakes. Look, let's go to 4K. And it has definitely dropped around about maybe 50 FPS less. This is a more intense scene, so yeah, about 160 or so. But this is a 144Hz 4K monitor, so, so we're still saturating that. So again, in terms of performance, if you want to play something like Apex Legends, this is pretty much maxing out what you can get from the game, assuming you're not going into like sky-high frame rate monitors. I know what I'm saying is going to upset some people, but don't think I'm letting anybody off the hook. The full picture is coming, I promise. I just want to look at this purely in terms of performance in the performance section. And then when we do the wrap up, we'll discuss everything, I promise. Like the thing for me that's actually really difficult about making this video is I know there is so much pressure to properly hate on everything that this card is and everything it stands for. But I just don't think that's useful. There are so many videos out there that are just talking about all of the bad points. And I'm not saying I only want to focus on the good. I'm saying the fact of the matter is people are going to want to buy a graphics card for their computer and if all they're hearing is everyone saying oh everything you can buy is rubbish don't buy anything wait a couple of years i don't think that's useful putting it into context with everything else and helping people to make an informed buying decision is which is why i say wait to the end of the video i promise it's all coming don't you worry let's move on to some battlefield 2042 though we'll make sure that dlss is enabled at automatic everything else is set to ultra and we'll start with 1440p Maybe we won't play some Battlefield because it looks like it's crashed. I thought this game was better now. It is a pre-release driver. Are you joking? As soon as we start recording. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. Why do you do this to me? Bad Battlefield. Bad. 
I'll try and capture some footage a little bit later for you, shall I? We're getting about 140 to 160 FPS. This isn't as high as Apex Legends and is probably quite similar to what you get in Warzone, but it's still not bad. But it's still not bad. It's not even the recording, it's just going. Well, we've got the information anyway, about 130 to 150 in Battlefield. You know what? I've had enough. I'm not doing any more benchmarking. I'm not doing any ever. I'm gonna get my lackey to do it. Oi! Benchmark us. Hello everybody, that's right, it's me. I am back to give you these numbers. And it's a little bit melancholy because on one hand, the performance actually is pretty decent. As we've mentioned in the video, I mean, as Marcus mentioned, I'm definitely not the same person. It is definitely uh, quite enticing really when it comes to the overall performance because what you get is something that can pretty much run any resolution and it can run 1440p especially at very high frame rates. But the issue is it's around about 20 frames a second or so more than the 3080, but then it's more expensive than the 3080. So the actual value of this card isn't great. And this is just a bit naff really, and this is why you're hearing loads of complaints about this card, because not only is the memory bandwidth a little bit less that could actually limit you in 4K, it doesn't seem to very much in the numbers that we've tested, but in some games it certainly might be an issue for you. It's just pretty depressing, pretty frustrating really, that despite the fact that the performance of this card is very good, we're pretty much seeing the same value as all of the other cards. And usually what happens is the lower down the stack you go, the better value and the more you get for your money. But we're just not really seeing it here. So while this is definitely a card that I know Marcus would love to have in his system because it pretty much has all of the right performance for the games and resolutions he would play, it's not really something that is easy to recommend in isolation because the value's not really there. But then the value isn't there on any graphics card and this is the point. This is actually a decent enough offering for what we've actually got on the table, but everything on the table at the moment just is pretty rubbish and I'm not sure when this is going to improve. Is it going to take all of the 30 series stock to just disappear and then the prices will come down? Do we need AMD or even Intel to probably have more competition? Or are we going to live in this graphics card bubble where everything seems to be more expensive because it can be. No one really is doing anything about it. The only thing that would properly stop this is if people stop buying graphics cards. But I think that's not going to happen because people need to buy graphics cards. So performance wise, this is absolutely fine. It's in line. The value is actually pretty much the same as the other cards that it's competing with, but it's not really fantastic when it comes to value, but it's more artificial which is pretty lame. So there you are. Performance of this is very much in line with the rest of the cards. I mean, it's to be expected, right? The value hasn't really improved, but it's not as bad as something like the 4080. If you spend a little bit more, you can get an AMD card that has slightly more performance, but obviously isn't gonna be such a ray tracing powerhouse. Currently doesn't have a DLSS3 competitor, but eventually it will. I'm also interested to see whether we can actually overclock this card. So let's give this a quick go. We'll open up Afterburner. We'll open up Cyberpunk and drop that in windowed mode. And we'll turn DLSS off for now. Obviously this isn't real world, but we just want to isolate the performance of this GPU. So if we overclock it, we can see whether we're actually getting any extra FPS. So at the moment, complete native rendering without any other fancy stuff going on. We're getting about 46, 47 FPS. So we go over to our power limit in our overclocking utility. We we'll max that out. And we'll also add 100 megahertz to the core count. I'll do about 50 on the memory and we'll see if we get any improvement. Probably a couple FPS actually. We're now hitting the 50s, which is nice to see. If you're wondering whether we're CPU bottlenecked by the way, we're not. This is running a top end 7950X and we're currently on 98, 99% GPU utilization. So clearly you are able to overclock this a little bit more and get some more juice out of it, but obviously outright stability is gonna be achieved with long-term testing rather than just sort of playing with it for five minutes or so. But we've definitely gone and got an extra probably two to four FPS when we were getting about 40. So yeah, about call it 7% extra performance by doing a bit of overclocking, but in terms of real world changes to your game, don't expect anything drastic. I mean, it hasn't actually crashed yet. How far can we go? Can we do 260? 3,075 megahertz and it's dead. Yeah, thought so. 3,000 megahertz is probably your ceiling, but obviously it's gonna depend on the exact card that you get. So then, the RTX 4070 
TI. Is it as good as my box handling skills? It's very interesting and I feel like if you've got a degree in psychology or like business management or something, you can see what Nvidia has essentially managed to do over the last few years, which is to sell more and more expensive graphics cards. We had the pandemic, people were buying them for more money than Nvidia were actually selling them for. And then suddenly it seems that we're in the place where a 4070 Ti can realistically be a street price of 800 to 950 pounds, which is, I wanna say unacceptable. I really wanna say unacceptable, but it's not because people are buying them and this is the issue. It seems that the whole stack at the moment is geared towards charging the highest possible price. The 4090, there is no competitor. I don't see that coming down anytime soon. 4080, that definitely needs to come down in price. It sounds as if people aren't buying them and AMD have a decent offering. But then the value of this is basically the same as the AMD cards. So if you're gonna be cross at Nvidia, also be cross at AMD. Because while Nvidia, I would argue, are probably more responsible for causing it, it is just the situation that we're in and everyone seems to be, as I say, out to get you a little bit. In terms of real world buying gaming advice, I really like this card. I can't really fault it unless you wanted maybe slightly different IO or you needed DisplayPort 2.1, then you go for the AMD offerings. But taking this at a performance level, I don't think anyone really needs much more than this unless you're playing on a 4K screen and you want all the bells and whistles because clearly this is still very capable it was able to do cyberpunk with all of the ray tracing dlss3 all of this stuff and it's still a lot more power efficient and quieter than something like a 3090 ti which for me i think is more important than having faster more memory people will disagree that's fine that's why there are other options you can go for but i think if you're like me and you play mainly multiplayer but sometimes a single player game this is going to be an excellent card for 4k high refresh rate 1440p gaming is very capable. So what do you do? Do you buy one or do you just wait for the next generation? There is no guarantee that this is ever going to end and people will vote with their wallets, especially at the moment. Like have Nvidia and AMD not got the memo that times are tough, that people can't even afford to pay their gas and electricity bills, let alone spend more money than ever on a gaming graphics card. But the reality is the sales numbers. And until we see those comes down, I can't see the pricing on these things changing, which is why purely from a what graphics card should you buy point of view, I think the 4070 Ti is an enticing option, believe it or not. You can look at the used market, you can get something lower specs, no one's forcing you to buy this, but if you need this level of performance, the value is very similar to the higher end offerings, and ultimately it's more performance than most people need without going into the CPU bottlenecking performance when you're gonna need to spend even more money on the rest of the rig. I just know. People are gonna be in the comments like, what are you on about? Why are you saying buy this? Tell everyone not to. People need graphics cards. If you have one, fine. Maybe no one will buy it and the price will come down. We'll have to wait and see what AMD does. Maybe there'll be a pricing war. The time has finally come for you to shout at the screen. Let me know all of your comments. What do you make of the 4070 Ti? But I think more importantly, graphics cards in general, in 2023. Is, is this going to go on forever or are you not going to buy one? Is everyone not going to buy one? And are the prices of these things going to come down? I would love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, then smash the like button and get yourself subscribed. It'd be great to have you along. And of course, if you are interested in current pricing on anything in this rig, you can find that link down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're there, why not check out Corsair's K100 Air Wireless? Ideal for both work and play, the K100 Air nets you up to 200 hours of battery life, slipstream or Bluetooth connectivity, and Cherry's ultra low profile key switches. With full per key RGB lighting, a truly wireless design and complete media control functions, this really is the keyboard of your dreams. Learn more today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.